critiques of, uh, of, of capitalism uh, that I culled back through uh, my own work for the poems that had um, dealt with that theme. Um, and so I'm going to start with that and then I'm going to end with uh, excerpts from uh, an essay, a poetic essay um, that I have no other copy of. Other than <laughs> um, okay. So, the arguments eschew the source at their own peril. A gaping hole in the sky speaks silences to the dumbstruck legions below, their heads tilting up, their mouths open. Tune out interference static, sorry ones and zeros and whatnot from the gadget boxes and chrome tabernacle circuitry, dispensing digital Eucharist to awestruck consumer bots. Whatever temple is good enough, more matter of no matter. As in, who cares? A question I want answered before another atmospheric airwave episode strikes you zombie. Hey, quench your fist, knucklehead, and watch the returns. The small hours are stealing the votes. Burgeoning hangover despite expanded sobriety stations. So many channels. Watch the intake, baby girl. First or last grail. Jesus, the air's heavy under this regime. Belly up to the new American century. As the saying goes, what's good for your goose is cooked. No do-over this time, Sisyphus. On you go, on you go, on you go. <clears throat> Range, or the fool's fever dream. Beyond the fence, the frontier was poemish. Forested voices poured fermented longing over words and wide-mouthed pint glasses. Like a laundromat quartet, lingerie and socks everywhere, one short, <laughs> lonesome threesomes of anguish and snake hiss, aimless, salacious provocation, zero machines for future. Venture capitalized on the inopportune slip up my ass on the line, was crossed up, double-crossed, loose-lipped, whereas tongue-tied, tight-ass, tongue-lashed, I lined the street with a writhing multitude, and riot cops feeling up to defending the whole home and each human soul. Violated my grand volition, orgiastic, archaic, anarchic, anachronistic, anachronistic wet dreams, now a dry town. Media flesh wires, tube to tube, anchor man to electric ground flights of fancy. Bed stories, he's, ooh, jeez. Sorry. Man to electric ground flights of fancy. Bed stories, he's fucked with bedtime stories to go off in my head. Out of time, mind full of fantasies, illicit, illicit grasps. Never mind the gap between hole and hole, holed up in a cell, brain cells, fetters to deforested voicelessness. Once poemish, now anthemic, anemic, and widely understood to cover the ugly truth, trademarked, with a syrupy liqueur. Poetry, Christianity, War, an argument concerning marketing. <laughs> Poems are cheerleaders for the visitors, out of my mind into the fame they deserve and want to pass on to their children. Goodwill boxes, the poems climb out of the blue for a reason. St. Vincent de Paul save us from our excess and love of security. Tags squirting ink on our innocence by the seat of our power. Sing love songs in a high register without regret. Onward, Christian, shoulder the blame for the missionary on his bicycle with sincerity. You left lying around for not just anyone to walk away with or fall into, unlike a pit of despair, but nearby, wearing garments of faith. No doubt, no doubt you'll stand in line for a beta version. How gloriously uncommon are your consumption habits. Proud of your difference. I salute your army of one for fulfilling its promise to the tune of 87 billion and many magazine subscriptions. Pornography and ballistics guarantee immorality for the men inside you. Drink to your many lives. All begin on the axis of an event horizon and the road to perdition, films for the soul ending with a vanishing point inside your television. Post-transgression constituency rumble, a second argument concerning marketing. 
Buy I my to wear as logo lingo for life. Take bait, so I my on a book, so crimes which are and less. Foretell self, buy the style I and as. No shut your mouth for the guilty guile of I my. Words only occasionally mean. Poetry, life, ain't the is self someone buys. Belie a commodity with clothes. Poetry of an I my as of a style word is a suspect thing. Be an unmarketable indictment. And then I'll end with this called the American Dram. Once upon the rant, Elias like, we prophesied the antinomian verb. In a garden hidden by a torment of roses, the quietists made the best of their split situation, half worm eaten, half reborn with carcass infestation. Those were days when it seemed the world would split open and suck us down into it, or the heavens had burst and suck us up. Later, after the days had passed, the quietists came out of their garden, nominally fighting off technological hegemony, all the while unwittingly buttressing the status quo with stakes and lattices. We went underground, in a sense becoming quietists ourselves, in the dark under dangling roots. We started taking down for up, and so finished in a garden of our own. Elias-like we returned, down into the old world, fighting gravity and history all the way. Our chariots gleamed with nutrient-rich soil. Upon the rant once again, with the world turned upside down. All right, so those are the samples of poems for the occasion. And here's a bit of a, an essay. Um, uh, so this essay is uh, on Jamie Moore's An Improvised Contraption, Notes on the Gringo Baroque. <laughs> so what I get from Jamie Moore is that the Gringo Baroque exists to build or cultivate an improvised language contraption with which to approach the irreducible, radiant, resistant substance of mystery embodied. The contraption's inputs, impure products of sacramentalizing attention to interzones, Laura Oldfield Ford's liminal spaces, breaks in territory or places between borders, Charles Olson's places between places that breed future, glimpsed on peripatetic drifts and played on imaginative consciousness using alternate tunings, seem to compost, then combust to conjure self-aware, other-seeking, signifying simian speech acts. Jamie Moore first came across evidence of the Gringo Baroque during the summer of 2011. He and the Gringo Baroque itself were lost and disoriented somewhere north of New Hampshire's White Mountains. <laughs> a friend of a friend of the Gringo Baroque, sporting a bandana, skinny jeans, Barcelona football strip, and ironic mustache, hiking along a disused rail bed claimed by purple loosestrife, suggested that the Gringo Baroque expects to find its tongue in the intercourse between sacramental attention and neo baroque Creole consciousness. <laughs> At first, Moore thought that the fellow traveler was coming on to him. Then, in a thought bubble coming from the head of this emissary of the Gringo Baroque, Moore caught a vision of two mountains descending into a deep, verdant valley, shot through with an alpine tramway pursued by a horn-blowing creature. <laughs> Upper half man with butterfly wings, lower half fish. In the corner of the foreground, Moore could see a bilingual road sign, entering the great north woods region, Grand Bois du Nord. He knew he was onto something. The friend of a friend of the Gringo Baroque was to take Moore to a cabin where the Gringo Baroque was squatting for the season before heading back to tr the Trieste of U.S. America. And Root, the sometime guide, left Moore to take a piss and never returned. Moore never found the Gringo Baroque up in the White Mountains during the summer of 2011 and has yet to meet with the Gringo Baroque in person. However, the friend of a friend of the Gringo Baroque knew Moore was from the coast, which is, I imagine, why he left behind an empty bottle of curious and ancient Tawny port with a message rolled up inside. 
The language contraption of the Gringo Baroque consciousness is an occasion for accruing fully embodied, inviolably resistant bioluminescent mystery. When Moore got up, he bought a, when Moore got home, he bought a bottle of port for himself, and after emptying its contents, sent the note bearing body out with the tide. The Gringo Baroque portal has been active ever since, conduit for countless communiques. Here are some of Jamie Moore's transcriptions of communiques from the vast vagabond network of Los Gringos Barocos. <laughs> Re Neo Barocco ecosystems sent from Starving Rock, Illinois, Illinois River. El Neo Barocco, decentered multiple, as complex as an ecosystem, shows the gringo another way. Another way to turn white monoculture fields and fields and fields of biogenetic corn, hellish mega-ranch slaughterhou slaughterhouses, into a multi-culture of rotating crops and livestock. The Gringo Baroque laughs and grumbles at gallery walls, white as those mandated by the USDA in slaughterhouses, white as New England churches. The Gringo Baroque smiles to hear that paint adorned classical sculpture, and laughs once more at those who see the white modern museum as an improvement. The Gringo Baroque wants to be as pied, mottled, brindled, and party-colored as the beauty Hopkins sees. <laughs> Transcription 2. Re tri tri Triestine Municipalismo Sin Nacionalismo. Sent from Gloucester, Massachusetts, Fort Square. The Gringo Baroque keeps the local in its eye vigilantly mindful of the local in relation to other locals, even those half a world away. The Gringo Baroque tends toward justice and well-being in response to present conditions, mindful of what is composted underfoot. The Gringo Baroque knows that certain local conditions are more conducive to stimulating the creation of Gringo Baroque consciousness and speech <laughs> acts. Consider Havana on the cusp of revolution, Creole consciousness cauldron, or Trieste before the First World War, polyglottal port life. Join James Joyce in Trieste and Tigres Tristes in Havana. The Gringo Baroque is a flowering weed that thrives in nutrient-rich compost, but can survive in infertile soils by means of mycorrhizal symbiosis. The Gringo Baroque is a matter of proprioception within domestic, sociopolitical, and geophysical ecosystems. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Re U.S. American Empire sent from Washington, D.C., behind the nation's capital. The Gringo Baroque is post colonial, but not over it. <laughs> it lives, a polyculture in the long shadow of the first encounter. The subjugations, eradications, resistances, displacements, negations paving overs, driving unders, going down ons, <laughs> fantasy projections, <laughs> temporary detentes, de facto ghettos, porous polyglottal polis, border outposts, and inevitably so on. <laughs> the Gringo Baroque eschews guilt-laden paralysis, lactic acid in the muscles of liberal post-colonial US American counterculture as much as it rejects decontextualized cultural conflations. The Gringo Baroque yawns at precious know-nothing lyrical fragments, <laughs> the well-wrought afterthoughts of an empire, and donning the fool's coxcomb and the scholar's holy threads, reads Julian Rios and Nestor Perlongor in translation before translating a bit of Severo Sarduiz's Neo Barocco and Lazama Lima's La Expresión Americana with its undergrad Spanish. <laughs> The Gringo Baroque loves translation and knows it's something else. <laughs> and when it gets very enthusiastic, filled, filled with its own possibilities, the Gringo Baroque grows mindful that its rhetoric not valorize American energy and force, <laughs> the destructive westward push now metastasizing as global capitalism. Upon reflection, a tentative blueprint for the Gringo Baroque may have first appeared as marginal notes written in the air surrounding Donald Wellman's 2010 talk, Olson and Autobiography, <laughs> which incorporated Wellman's own translation of sections of Heriberto Yepes's 
El Imperio de la Neo Memoria. The gringo baroque was moved by Wellman's autoethnography, then laughed while Wellman as Yepes confounded and irritated the assembled hagiographic scholars <laughs> before finally materializing to defend Wellman when several particularly hypersensitive Olsonians, <laughs> recognizing the value of neither Wellman's cheeky performance nor of Yepes's improbable critique of Olson as an ideologue of empire and singer of thefts and lootings, began shouting Wellman down. <laughs> but Donald Wellman is not to blame for the Gringo Baroque. In fact, the Gringo Baroque may only exist as possibility. The central, re the centrality of marginal literature. This is the last communique. Sent from the port. The Gringo Baroque can be embarrassing in its excesses. <laughs> Surface untidiness, eccentric manner, unwise permissiveness. Though the Gringo Baroque may seem to promote carelessness or inattentiveness, the care and attention are simply unfashionably, unconventionally, inefficiently, ineluctably elsewhere. <laughs> Somewhere you do not expect them. In margins, in footnotes, on scraps in your junk box but exactly where they need to be. And seeing what is present, what fills this elsewhere, formerly a margin, is to become aware of what is lacking in the apparent perfection, what is excluded from the fastidious cleanliness of the non-baroque, the merely gringo. 